Every time that I've paused, and I've been doing it since I started talking to you this morning, every time that I've paused, each of you has thought about two things. Number one, what did I say? Number two, do you care? What we forget as presenters is that listeners are very selfish. I'm going to repeat that because I'm going to talk about it all morning. Listeners are very selfish. When I started talking this morning, I doubt that anybody here was thinking, I wonder if Joel is nervous. I doubt that you're thinking that. I'll tell you what you're probably thinking, and please correct me if I'm wrong. You're probably thinking, I have a lot of work on my desk. And I'm away from my desk for a couple of hours this morning, and when I get back to the office, I'm going to have 20 voicemails and 10 emails, and they're all going to be unpleasant, and, I, and I'm going to be in the office till 8 o'clock tonight, or else I'm going to be caught up behind for the rest of the week. This guy better be real good. Number two, you're probably thinking, I can't even get out of here right now. And my presentation skills may not be perfect, but they've served me pretty well so far in my career. And I don't want to listen to some outsider who has no idea what I do all day give me a lot of textbook crap on presentations. Again, this guy better be real good. That's probably what you are thinking. But when I'm pausing, I have a chance to think. And what's going through my mind is, I have to give a presentation this morning. And it's a real important presentation, because these are all real important people. And if they like me, they can bring me into their companies to, to do programs, but they're not going to like me, because you know what? That projector's going to stop working any second. And, and when it does, I don't know what I'm going to do, and they're going to think he's supposed to be a professional presenter, and he, he can't even work without visual aids, and they're going to send a nasty email to Art, and I'm never going to work in Chicago again. And I forget. You don't care about me. You care about you. You don't care if this projector works or it doesn't. You don't care about my emails. You care about yours. Again, you want to know what's in it for you. So what's happening right now is I'm talking. I'm talking at a certain speaking pace. And we'll talk more about speaking pace in just a minute. But I'm moving right along, and you're following behind. When I pause, you catch up. Again, you think about, what did I say, and do you care? But I have a chance to think. When I'm pausing, I'm thinking, what do I say next? I get my thoughts together, and then I move on until it's time for you to catch up. There are times when you don't want to pause, when you don't want your listeners to think about what you just said. Then move on. If you gave bad news, you're going to follow with good news. Don't give them a chance to think about the bad news. I'll tell you a, a true story about pausing. Actually, it's an old story now. It's, it's over 20 years old. It was the day that President Reagan was shot. Now, on that day, you all remember that day. On, on that day, I was in an airplane, and I was flying from Chicago to Los Angeles. The captain received word from the ground that the president had been shot. And his thought process was, this is important information. I should share this information with my passengers. Now, as you know, he can communicate to the passengers whenever he wants. He has a public address system. He didn't realize what he was about to do. He was about to give a communication, a little presentation, to a group of listeners. His listeners are passengers in an airplane. Here's what he said. He gets a true story. He said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain speaking. And he paused. Now, that pause is not frightening. We've all been on planes. We've all heard, ladies and gentlemen, of the captain speaking. And maybe he's going to tell us there's a point of interest, or there's going to be turbulence, or we're going to be late, or we're going to be early. In fact, when you travel, you only half listen when you hear that. His next line was very frightening. He said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain speaking. I have some horrible news. <laughs> and he paused. <laughs> Now, that pause lasted, I would say, for one second. But during that one second, a lot of thoughts can go through your mind. Because obviously, when the captain of the plane says, I have horrible news, 
we know he's going to say we're going to crash. There's nothing I can do about it. His next line was going to be some nut just shot President Reagan. But again, he paused. He said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain speaking. I have some horrible news. Some nut. And he paused again. <laughs> now at that point, obviously, we think it's a bomb or a hijacking. And again, when he went down, it's a true story, when he went down and he said some nut just shot President Reagan, the whole plane burst into applause. Everybody on the plane was clapping. <laughs> and I was one of them. And we were not, hey, did you hear that? All right. You know, we were not applauding because we didn't like Reagan. But all of a sudden, that was real good news. <laughs> Next, speaking pace. As presenters, we're not stupid. We know the faster we talk, fast we can sit down and get this over with. If there any questions? Or else... I am so afraid of speaking too quickly, I sound ridiculous. Now, what is the proper speaking pace? And you've all been given bad information about this when you were in high school or in college because the, your professors or teachers all said to you, now when you get up in front of that group tomorrow, slow down. You don't slow down, nor do you speed up. A group is nothing more than a bunch of individuals. Talk as though there's only one person in the room. And, and I'm going to prove that to you, and everything here will make sense to you that I'm saying, but it's just common sense. Let's suppose that I'm going to be giving a presentation today to 150 people. And Phil Beam is the first one here. And he sits down toward the back, and I'm standing. I'll probably, sorry, I'm, I'm probably will be using this thing. I'll use this podium, because I'm giving this big speech. So I'm sitting here and I'm talking to Phil Beal. And Pat comes in and he sits over in the back. But I'm ignoring Pat, I'm only talking to Phil. And Art comes in and he sits down in the front here, but I'm ignoring Art, I'm only talking to Phil. As far as Phil is concerned, and pretty soon there are 100 people in here now, it doesn't affect his hearing that there are 100 people in the room. As far as he's concerned, and as far as each of you are concerned, there's only one person, two people in the room. There's you and me. And, and I'm going to prove that to you right now, because as I've been talking, you haven't thought about the people around you or the people in the back of the room or anybody else. And again, I'm going to prove that to you, because what I'd like you to do right now, I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, I want everybody to turn around, look at the person in the back, right behind them, look them right in the eye, and say, are you enjoying this? One, two, three. Everybody turn around, look at the person right in the eye, right in the eye. Look at <laughs> And you, you all saw what happened. You thought I was talking to you. <laughs> And the person behind you thought I was talking to him or her, and each of you, I told you to do it, each person did it one at a time, and you looked at the back of somebody's head. So talk in a normal, one-to-one, -one conversational speaking pace. When you're giving a presentation, you're only doing it because of convenience. You're having a conversation with a bunch of people, but to save time, you're doing them as a group. It's no different than talking to them one at a time.